G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Body Meets Mind podcast, philosophies and strategies for an elevated life. Uh, as always, I'm with my co-host and friend, Paulie G. How are you, mate? You well? Cheers, my friend. Oh, very good. What have we got in that uh, that cupper there? I've got, I, honestly, I've got four different vessels of liquid around do me. Yes, <laughs> oh, I do. do you really? I really Urine. do. <laughs> Should I say uh, drinkable liquid? Yeah, that's Urine. right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, five then in that case. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> um, I have a, a cup of decaf coffee. Beautiful. Um, I have a vegetable juice that I pressed okay. yesterday, mm. um, w- which I do every Monday. Mm. Um, I have a collagen shake. Love it. And Love it. I have my canister of water. Four vessible <laughs> vessels. What happened to water. the urine? <laughs> Uh, oh, that's already been consumed. Okay. <laughs> You've already consumed that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's recyclable, so you could, you know, redigestible. It works well. It's sterile. It's sterile. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, I mean, I was about to say that's a lovely segue, but it's not a lovely segue in today's episode. <laughs> but we are talking about stress, and uh, and we will segue into uh, meditation because meditation is a, a lovely way to mitigate the buildup of stress by just becoming more aware of how stress, stress impacts your life. And I'm just going to put my hand up and say, I don't have a regular meditation practice at all. You know, I, yeah. um, it's not something I'm, I'm so aware of the benefits of it. Um, I, I'm often reminded about how good it is. And I, and every time I do it, it is fantastic. <laughs> and I just, for whatever reason, can't get into it. <laughs> It's like it's sex, habit. isn't it? It's like after you finish it, you're like, why don't I do more of this? That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I mean, well, I'm still a virgin, so, uh, oh, you know, right. I wish that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, it, it is one of those things, mate. I, um, it's funny. I need to find a way to ingrain it into my life. But do you you have a regular practice? Uh, I have, No, I would say I don't have a regular meditation practice. I go in and out. Pardon the pun. <laughs> uh, um, I, 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 it comes in waves. So I have moments where I'm an intense meditator, but by mm. intense, I just mean uh, consistent. Yeah. Um, and the benefits are just significant. And mm. I, I, I can personally receive those benefits in, you know, five, six, seven minutes. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's wonderful. But one thing I do mm. uh, acknowledge is the value that you can get from what a meditation practice looks like right. in, in various different ways. And it doesn't need to be the uh, the classical form of uh, sitting in a loincloth on a on a mountaintop. Yes. Um, you don't have to go to the foothills of the Himalayas <laughs> to meditate. That's, that's, right. that's what I'm trying to, to really uh, communicate here. Yes. Um, you, you can listen to an amazing uh, piece of music that mm. really, really makes you, grounds you, anchors you, makes you present. Mm. Um there are so many different forms in which mindfulness and meditation can really manifest itself. Mm. Well, I mean, that, I mean, you, 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 you touch on a great point. I mean, you know, meditation is a broad topic and I think it comes down to what you want out of any practice, you know, meditation and beyond. So if you, you can, if you're able to um, recognize a pain point or a problem, um, you know, I struggle to concentrate or focus. Um, mindfulness meditation is wonderful. I feel like, um, I, you know, I have physiological pain um, and every time I think about the past, I, I quiver and shake. Breath work, trauma healing, that sort of meditation is wonderful. I mean, the, med- the term meditation is to become familiar with. Now, mm. you can you can use that and get really specific on what it is specifically about yourself that you want to become familiar with. So yes. in, in, in that light, meditation is, is different things to different people depending on their pain points. Spot on. And, and I think that's a, a really great uh, kind of segue into the, the amount of different modalities and vehicles that you can use in, let's call it this, um, you know, kind of meditation slash mindfulness uh, chapter that we're exploring here. And, uh, mm. you know, breath work is just a wonderful example of being able to use a tangible aspect of what it is that you that is within you. It's a piece yes. of technology that you own that is with you every second of every day as long as you are breathing. Mm. And you have this incredible vehicle to be able to utilise and to be able to manipulate and to be able to work with, to be able to also cultivate that mindful state. And um, 
I think it's at the forefront and at the most uh, foundational points of all forms of meditation, you know. Yeah. Um, I know you've got a great deal of experience. Your partner, Siobhan, also has, a, like, she's she's yeah. a, she's the breath queen. Yeah, you know? that's right. She, uh, she just parades around the house calling herself that, mate. So. <laughs> and so she should. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but but let's let, let's sit on breath for just a moment mm -hmm. uh, because the first thing I learned when it, when it came to meditation is to be able to really really anchor your breath and yeah. understand exactly how to use it to develop that as I've mentioned in a previous episode um, the Tibetan uh, Buddhists call it shamatha which is mm. single minded focus and they tend to to use the breath to be able to have that tangible aspect behind it so you can concentrate on this. Mm, yep. Um, I personally, uh, through my study of that breath work, uh, we used two modalities and one was to be able to really focus on the breath coming in and out of your nose. Mm. And, and we used, um, we were told or instructed to visualize um, almost like a, looking at, the point between your nose and your upper lip, mm -hmm. um, almost like looking at it through a sniper's rifle finder mm -hmm. to be able to really, really drill in and visualise um, the breath coming in and out um, through that point. And it's amazing what can happen when you really do visualise on a single uh, point. And yep. uh, what, what tends to happen is, is when you're breathing, when you're concentrating on that breath in, um, and also through the nose, that can be a, m more of a um, an excitation point. It, it, it can in awaken you a little bit. Yes. Uh, and then there's the aspect of um, drawing your focus towards your abdomen, coming out and back in, out mm. and back in. And that can be a more grounding effect to be able to really um, uh, bring you from that excited state into the more grounded aspects. Mm, it's so true, man. It's, it's, I mean, the, the breath is, you know, I remember a, um, I can't remember if I've said, if I've said this on the show or not, but, um, I was rolling with a black belt, um, in jujitsu and, um, you know, he, he was obviously all over me. There was a white belt at this time <clears throat> and he just kind of stops and he goes, dude, control your breathing. And I, he gave me an awareness of my breath. And of course, being a white belt, it was, <laughs> You know, just creating anxiety within yeah. myself because yeah. fighting is such a primal threat response. You yeah. know, um, that's why I love jujitsu so much because it helps you calm down what's most primarily, primarily um, uh, dangerous. You know, mm -hmm. um, and then at the end, he pulls him aside and he says, "You know, something that a black belt told me once many years ago was uh, that your breath is your reality. Mm. So the more you can focus on it, I mean, I mean." it's not even the more you can focus on it, the more you actually, you can actually use your breath to understand what's going on in your world, you know, external mm -hmm. and internal, you know, if you, and, and, and jujitsu is such a great, it's, it's just ground zero of that, you mm -hmm. know, oh mm -hmm. my God, I don't know this position. Well, um, I don't have a lot of sweeps. Um, I don't <clears> know my guard very well here. Um, I'm starting to panic because I started mm. to feel stuck and trapped. And mm, what's even mm. scarier than fight or flight is freeze. Mm. Um, the inability to remove oneself from a dangerous position. Um, mm. So that's a wonderful, I mean, it's ground zero, but even beyond that as well, in just in a life situation, taking a moment just to go, how am I breathing right now? You know, it's going to tell you a lot about how you feel within that environment. And let me ask you something, just drawing back on your jujitsu experience. Uh, when you were alerted to uh, your breath. So there are so many different ways. There are so many things going on right there, right? Like you don't know how to, you don't know how to sweep. You're unfamiliar with the position, the grappling hold, all these types of things. But your opponent has drawn your attention to your breath. Now your attention is drawn to your breath with that. Yep. What then took place and what then manifested in the way you actually were able to compete with it? Yep. Perfect. So, so one of the good things about 95% of black belts is that they provide opportunities for you to learn because they could kill you in a mm. second. They, you know, they can grab yeah. your neck, you know, and they don't want that. They want a role, you know? Yeah. Um, so he's in mount, <clears throat> he's in mount, which is basically a self-explanatory position. He's, he's on my top and he's past my legs. 
um, and he's starting to put some top pressure on. So there's a lot of things called, um, um, there's lots of positions in that, but um, I'm starting to feel like I can't breathe because it is claustrophobic and all these weights on my chest. And then he, and then he kind of sits up and he says, mate, focus on your breathing. And then he goes back into that position. But of course, as we know, when you're in that threat response and you've engaged the sympathetic nervous system, your ability to think logically is actually at, is, is really, it's mm. almost eliminated. You're just all mm. instinct. So the first thing I did was, um, and I got this from, um, Hicks and Gracie. And he says that if you want more oxygen in, in your lungs, focus more on the out breath. Cause what a lot of people do is they try to get more oxygen in by going, <laughs> but mm. getting oxygen from here is nothing like <sighs> getting oxygen from here. So it says, if you focus more on the out breath on the exhalation, you can draw in six, seven times more the amount of oxygen, which disengages the sympathetic nervous system and allows you to think more clearly. And lo and behold, when I had more oxygen in my belly and I could see my position better, there was all these offerings that he was giving me. You mm. know, he, his knees weren't tight to my chest. There were so many ways for me to regard, you know, so, so that was just a wonderful lesson for me. And this is why I love jujitsu because it can be applied to the broader context of life in that <clears> if you focus on your breath calm down, take a greater perspective, you'll often find that you're not actually trapped and there is yeah. a way, you know? I, I love that. And you're right. It is a metaphor for life, you know, when you're able to take control of the one anchoring aspect, all of a sudden what felt constrictive becomes liberating. You essentially turn into Neo from That's Matrix. exactly right. Oh, I, I was Neo that for a second there. Yeah, The, the entire Neo. world just turned into zeros and ones. That's exactly right. I saw zeros and ones. I drank a lot of urine. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, which, no, look, look, in all seriousness, that's, that, that's amazing. Do you remember the first time that meditation came across your awareness and the first time you really, really like, I suppose, uh, um, participated in a meditation practice and mm. the benefits that you receive from it? Yeah, I think um, first time, well, I th first time was probably the, the sixth or seventh um, session I had with my therapist in 2014. And um, and he was starting to talk to me about a lot of the evidence-based stuff that clinicians discuss, CBT, gold standard of therapy, um, um, into, from an evidence-based perspective, which is, you know, for someone who loves spirituality and philosophy and, and person-centered therapy, um, it can be a little bit dull sometimes, but from an evidence-based perspective, it just does work. Mm. People become more aware of how they think and how they feel and how that affects their behavior. You know, and it, it creates autonomy and agency. So, but anyway, he was talking to me all about that. And I said, what is the process that, that helps one become more aware of that stuff that seems to run like an unconscious program? He started talking to me about meditation. And at the time, I remember him saying, he's like, no, I've been meditating for five years. And I was like a 21-year-old kid, like blown away. I was like, oh, my God, like this dude's a monk, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So that was probably the first time I'd actually heard about it or maybe the first time um, it kind of sat with me, you know? Mm. Um, and then when I first started doing it, got nothing from it, couldn't get it, you know, just didn't understand it. Um and if I'm being completely honest with you, reading books has always been the thing that has made me more aware. Um, but that doesn't absolutely mean that meditation has its time and place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what about you, dude? Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, I was a heavy grinder and clench. I suffered, I have still do to a certain degree, suffer from bruxism. Mm. Uh, my entire life, which is the clenching of the jaw. Mm. So I, I've been sleeping with a mouth splint, I would say, since I was 15, 16 years old. Um, and I was lucky enough to uh, be in contact with a close family friend of mine, Dr. Harry Ball. Shout out if you're yes. listening. Um, has. Has. Uh, a <laughs> great guy. And uh, he was able to really uh, give me a sense of, so this is the tool. This is going to stop you from wearing your teeth to the nub, uh, right, uh, the, the mouth splint, mm. but this is not going to change the relationship that you have with your with your grinding, with your clenching. Mm. So he got me onto a couple of uh, audio, and this was like, I'm showing my age here, but I reckon it was like, 
16. Yeah, it was a record. I had a portable record player that uh, actually was a gramophone. <laughs> he got me uh, onto uh, quill and parchment. And, uh... <laughs> it was a it was a CD. Uh, yeah. It was definitely a CD. Um, and I would have been, yeah, listening to this. It was called, uh, I've, I've tried to look it up on Spotify, on Google. Uh, I can't find it anywhere. It's uh, so if the creator of this particular um, meditation yes. is around, um, please let me know. It was called hypno relaxation, and mm. and and hypnotherapy is a really really fascinating um, you know kind of uh, point that we can diverge to as well because I yep. feel and consider that is a um, a subsection of meditation. Mm. It changes um, the, you you know the makeup of your mind right. and subconscious. It puts you in an altered state, right? Mm. So what this was able to do was to put me into an altered state. And this is the first time I experienced that transition of brainwave. Uh, yes. And, and it was uh, it was refreshing. I felt present. I felt incredibly uh, uh, just, just aware and alert. Uh, and, and I felt kind of like a new person after mm. I had always done it. So... In a way, I kind of, I needed it. It was like a drug. I loved doing it. It took about 12 minutes to do, and I was just in love. Like, mm. I, I would say that I am susceptible to a certain level of hypnotherapy. Dr. Huberman calls it, um, what does he call it, uh, NSDR, non oh, oh, yes. rest. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> which is just a more scientific way of, you know, yoga uh, sutra or, um uh, yoga nidra or yep. um uh some form of kind of guided meditation or yeah. hypnotherapy so this is the first thing that i've done and i've kind of gone through various different um formats of um uh, of of meditation guided and non-guided um depending on what i feel my mind needs or my body needs and craves at that particular yep. point in time sometimes i just love just being and listening to yeah. you know like closing my eyes at the park and listening to and i tell you right now one of the the, the greatest gifts as a father is being able to sit down uh, with with your child and you know just both of us closing our eyes and just asking my my eldest daughter Edie questions about what she can hear mm. uh what 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 can she feel on her face mm. uh and you you feel like you're really really teaching them mm. to switch off a world nice. that is so so triggered by uh stimulus you know yeah yeah, man, I love that because I love, you know, I, I can hear the passion, you know, um, it's, uh, it's funny, like one of the first, do you know this actually, dude, I've not actually said this to you. One of the shows of my old show that got the most. Um, my mate? Yes. Yeah. 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 That got the biggest um, reception and response was our show together. Oh, in really? The, in the Breathwork Shed. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. Awesome. Just, just the passion um, that comes from you, from being a dad. Um, you're obviously very good with your vocabulary as well. And um, I think people just could really feel that energy that and passion that you have. And I think a lot of people- I, sp I speak good. I you, speak good. Dude, you speak fucking ripper. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> so, but it was good. And and it, it comes up, it comes across there as well. You know, um, hearing the passion as a father, um, which is just fantastic because I think people can sometimes focus on the difficulties associated with it. And they're there, obviously, but the meaning is also there and the fulfillment. And I can only imagine, you know, um, so that's, uh, that's really well, good. Does that- well, you, Thank you yeah. so much for that. That's very sweet of you to say. And- uh, yeah. And it's awesome to hear that the listeners also. Um, they, they loved it. But I was going to say, do they, um, when you're taking um, Edie, Edie? Edie, Eden. Yep. Eden is her given name. Eden, yep. sure. Um, to the park and so forth. Does that um, motivate you again to get back into a meditation practice? Because you see the value and the worth it's having on her as someone that you're molding. Yeah, yeah. It's uh Without a doubt, when mm. I see the innocence of like a a child, um, you know, tap into that, I'm like, this is this is gold. And as well, to be able to tame a four year old uh, who is like just 
manic and all over the shop and just be able to kind of ground them and to be able to find entertainment in the simplest of things mm. is, is is amazing because you you're fi- you're actually finding I get really excited by switching off like yes. it's like this I, I feel like a, a little kid again it's like yep. you know it's almost like a game. You can close your eyes and you can be in your backyard and you start uh, trying to identify little things. It's like, oh, I hear a car about three streets away. Yeah. I hear, uh, you know, a cricket in, in the trees somewhere, you know, rustling the, fed, uh, rustling the leaves. And you become this little detective, mm. uh, but but you need your, your brain needs to be so razor sharp and focused, and not thinking about anything else for you to be able to do that. So mm. that's just another incredible form and manifestation. And and you know what, I say if uh, you can teach a kid to do it, it's probably the, the the most poignant way to be able to explain it to an adult as well. Totally, totally, yeah. And and at the end of the day, you know, I think it's all about. I mean, people have, people have different views on what the most important thing to do in life. Um, for me, it's always just been to to know thyself, I think, because life mm. is a giant, um, you know, book, really. But if you start <clears> to <throat> understand the language and, and get a taste for how the book plays out, then it becomes more engaging and it becomes mm. better for you, you know, um, mm. as opposed to just running around blind all the time and feeling like you're always falling into pit, pitfalls, you know, mm, learning mm. about how life works and how you work from all of the different facets that you and I are interested in, mm. biological, philosophical, emotional, spiritual, what our needs are, six human needs, as Tony Robbins mm. talks about. Mm. You get all of that and you apply that knowledge so that you embody it and it becomes wisdom. Life becomes a really good place for you. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, there's one thing that, uh, you know, the, the meditation stance that we kind of administered for, for, for the most part in India was one where we would sit down close, uh, cross-legged and we would have one hand like so and the other yeah. hand would be crossed over like this kind of. Nice. It's hard for me to do when yeah, I'm like yeah, this. Sure. this. I don't know what to do with my hands. This is not how we meditated. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it would be in our lap. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, but the, the symbolization of this would, would be um, one hand symbolizing wisdom mm. and knowledge and the other one ex- uh, um, symbolizing experience. Mm. And without wisdom you, you know, w- with wisdom, um, that 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 is one thing. But coupling it with ex- the experience of life, I love that. Um, that is, it gives it each of the other element, yes, uh, a significant um, exponential power. Dude, that's uh, that's yin and yang, isn't it? I- I've always felt that stoicism can become too passive, but it's necessary, like wisdom, and then at the same time, and it's also masculine and feminine. You know, yeah, um, totally awareness masculine and then mm-hmm. vitality experience feminine you know totally. this is this is beyond the genders um I absolutely but you, you need to have that's right energies exactly right i love that that's really good you need both and i've often found that like becoming more aware bringing it back to meditation becoming more aware of where you are on that dichotomy or on that spectrum you know am i too am i being too stoic you know even in my life I, you know Am I am I reading too many books now? Am I getting too obsessed in the learning and the language, and I'm and I'm forgetting to live and go out and have fun, go to the beach, fucking eat a sandwich, <laughs> you know? Totally, totally. Yeah, that's it, you know. Um, and then uh, and then when I'm too far on that side, okay, maybe it's time to pull back a little bit and you know think about my relationship with the world, and, you know, cultivate mm. that awareness, um, mm. and then also be in the moment mm. as well. And. You know, a lot of people can get caught in the trap of um, thinking that I'm constantly looking to, you know, I'm I'm never there, but yeah. you, you 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 may maybe you're always there, right? And and this is the expression of life. It's mm-hmm. like always. It's a dance, right? So wherever you're at, it's contextual. Perhaps yesterday it was about reading a book. Today, it might be about having a beer at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 absolutely. You're right. You, you're totally right. Because we that's the other thing. We don't really know 
when we're there in the moment because total presence is void of consciousness because if you're aware of the situation, well, I mean, maybe not maybe if you're enlightened, then it's not. Um, but do you know what I mean, man? It's like you, you only can, you can only go, oh yeah, that was happening upon reflection. <clears throat> mm. But when I'm currently here right now, it's just experience, you know, mm. and you know what, funnily enough, even saying that I feel more present as a result, just every now and then it kind of snaps you back into the, into the moment, you know, and I'll go away again and I'll shift off into the thought and so forth. But sometimes those moments can be lovely. They, they can be lovely and they can be hard as well. You know, uh, these, the moments of clarity are just so, um, they're liberating to a certain degree, mm. but those retrospective moments that you're talking about when you're going through them, I've experienced this recently, you know, like it's painful to be in a transitional point. Yeah. It's really painful because yeah. there's this sense of unknowing and this sense of like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But there's also a sense of if you have, if you have the awareness to be able to, um, bring this filter of learning and being able to know and understand that every experience that you have in life is a growth experience. And mm. drawing this back to um, the meditation practice that that we, we we were talking about in the beginning, it's like every time you sit down to meditate, you're putting money in the bank of self awareness. Mm. Mm. And yep. self awareness is like this bank that you can fill up and fill up and fill up and you get to express that every time you have an experience in life, whether it's uh, a purely embracing experience, whether it's one of conflict with, with yourself or with somebody else. This element of self-awareness is filling to the brim. The more you get to know yourself in a practice of meditation, whatever that looks like mm. to you, and you can then express it how you see fit. Mm. Mate, that's a that's a wonderful place to finish. I think that's a that's a, that's exactly right. I mean, it certainly makes me want to meditate more. That's for sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Got to well, hold on to the habit now. But uh, uh, yeah, and, and if you don't, then you suck. You, you, <laughs> 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 that's such a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah, you suck. Yeah. No judgment. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But I don't. I won't like you anymore. <laughs> Objectively, you suck. That's right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but oh you, dear. You'll come back around, and uh, th th there'll be a series of life circumstances that will be presented in front of you mm. that will trigger you to to want to meditate again or be mindful in some way. And that might be going for yeah. a walk. That might be um, just sitting and having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee in the sunshine and letting the sun's rays. Like one of the mm. greatest, most Simple pleasures in my life is, and you'll you'll know this when yeah. you're my father. It's like <laughs> when everyone is out of the house, yes. you can pour yourself a cup of coffee. You can sit outside and you can just let the sunshine pour onto your face. So good, yeah. And nothing will take that moment away from you. Yes. That is mindfulness and meditation. Dude, and, and it can be experienced right now. I know you got a boot, you got someone to two, but uh, what a day for it, you know? Yeah, absolutely, what without a, a doubt. Well, thanks for the chat, Tommy boy. Always it was a pleasure, mate. Always a pleasure. Um, and uh, we'll be seeing you very soon. Thank you, everyone, for having a listen. Uh, guys, just a little bit of a, a call to action, so mm, to speak. Mm. Um, why don't you guys let us know what forms of mindfulness or meditation you guys participate in? We'd love to know. Yep. Um, write it on the, uh, th there should be on YouTube or various we're, different social We're media. everywhere. <laughs> we're we will places. be everywhere. We are yeah. omnipresent. We are, that's right. <laughs> um, but let us know and we'd love to engage with you guys and, mm. and get your take on what your meditation practices are. Totally. All right, Paulie, until next time, my friend and everyone, bye-bye for now. Bye, Tommy. Bye, guys.